Welcome to this guide to solving common problems in MSFS. Each separate issue is timestamped in the description below. I hope you find something useful in here. If you've planned your flight in the world map but you don't know where to find the INS frequency for your destination runway, I'll show you where to locate these in the airplane systems. For planes where manual tuning is required, I'll point you to a handy online resource. In planes with a Garmin G3000 like the Honda Jet and Citation Longitude, if you click into Flight Plan, click your destination, then Waypoint Info, you'll be able to find the ILS frequencies at the bottom of the Frequencies tab. Click the frequency for the runway you want to land on, and you'll then be given the option to assign it as the active frequency on the NAV1 radio. If you select that, you're ready to go, and we can confirm it's tuned to NAV1 by clicking Audio and Radios and checking the NAV1 frequency displayed. Moving on to Boeing, specifically the 747, 777 and Dreamliner, as long as you've set a destination runway in your flight plan, you'll find that the ILS frequency is already pre-tuned in the FMC. To check that, you can go into Nav Radio, and you can see here that the ILS for our destination airport has already been tuned. You'll find the same thing in Airbus. This functionality should exist in the default A320, as well as the fly-by-wire A32NX and the Phoenix A320. For planes that require manual tuning, for example a Boeing 737, I recommend apxp.info. It generally follows the latest free AIRAC cycle, which is used by X-Plane, and MSFS tends to match this. If you search for the code of your destination airport in the box in the top right, you'll be presented with a list of frequencies. The ILS frequencies are generally labelled glide slope slash ILS. Frequency is displayed in the frequency column, the identifier to the right of that, the course for the runway, is underneath the localizer column with a runway number displayed to the right. If you can't find an ILS frequency on this page, it's likely your destination does not have an ILS at the runway. I've heard reports of people struggling to make their planes turn on the taxiway. If this happens to you, there are two main control settings that you need to check. If we click into the Sims Options and Controls menu, and then select our normal flying joystick or gamepad, head to Flight Control Surfaces, under primary control services, you'll want to make sure the rudder axis is assigned because MSFS generally uses the rudder to actuate the nose wheel. If this doesn't work, change your filter to all and search for steering. You'll then find an option to assign a nose wheel steering axis, which may help in some planes. An issue I've heard people reporting with the PMDG 737 is the inability to activate VNAV or LNAV. Remember that for VNAV to work, your Perf init page in the FMC needs to be complete. A guide on how to do this is in my PMDG 737 full flight tutorial. Remember also that for LNAV to work, not only do you need a route plan in the FMC, but you also need to wait until after engaging your autopilot in the air to activate LNAV. This is a configuration option that varies by airline in the real world, and this is the configuration that PMDG have modelled here. If your planes are doing weird stuff, for example engines not starting even though you're following correct procedures, or even stuff like nose diving on approach, you'll want to check they're up to date, especially as stuff does tend to break between sim updates. If you bought your plane from the marketplace, simply head to the marketplace, click through to your content manager and tick the update available filter. Any planes that need updating will be displayed here, simply tick the box next to it and then press the blue download button. Download progress will be displayed in the notification bar. If you purchased from a different site such as Sim Market, simply head to your account tab and then your downloads page and all updates for the planes you've purchased will be displayed here. For Just Flight, your updates can be found on the My Account section of the website. From here, click through to your orders page. Displayed below each add-on will be a button saying download slash activation details. Simply click that and download the update from the page. If you purchased the Captain Sim 777 from anywhere that wasn't the MSFS Marketplace, on your PC you'll find an app called the Ace Updater. If you click Update in this application, it will automatically download the latest version of the aircraft. Other aircraft like the PMDG 737, Phoenix A320 and Fly-by-Wire A32NX come with bespoke launcher applications which clearly specify when an update for the aircraft is available. If your super-secret supersonic military fighter jet doesn't want to go above Mach 1, even at full throttle. It's probably because the afterburners aren't on. In MSFS, afterburners are not part of the throttle axis, except they are activated by a separate hotkey. By default on PC, this is Shift and F4, and Xbox will have a default assignment also. Remember that in addition to afterburners, Darkstar also has scramjets. How to activate these is covered in my Darkstar full flight tutorial. If you're experiencing in-flight crashes to desktop, 
it's probably because of outdated scenery files. If you purchased your scenery through the InSim Marketplace, the process for updating this is the same as updating planes and is covered at the 3 minute 20 mark of this video. If your scenery is from an external site like flightsim.to, the site has quite a handy feature near the bottom of the page if you logged in, where it lists all of the add-ons you have for the pending updates. If you click through to view more, you can find a list of all your scenery and aircraft that require updates from this site, and work through them one at a time. If you find that your glass cockpit instruments are laggy or not updating as frequently as you'd like, this is a setting that can be configured in the graphics options of MSFS. It's located at the bottom of the graphics tab of general options and is clearly labelled glass cockpit refresh rate. Weirdly higher refresh rates are more demanding on performance, so you may actually introduce lag by trying to reduce it. If you're disappointed that the Top Gun Maverick carrier is only available in the mission mode and not in free flight, there is a fantastic carrier add-on by Hard Deck Simulations which is available on the Just Flight website. This add-on runs alongside MSFS and the carriers can be found in free flight by searching for the term aircraft carrier in the world map. Each carrier contains working cats and cables. Thank you for watching, I hope you found something useful in this video. If you did, please drop a like and feel free to subscribe as I make this kind of content fairly regularly. Take care and I'll see you next time.